Good morning, cultists. In our previous episode, we attempted to obliterate the economy of Arkham by flooding the market with hardcore narcotics. You know what? We were actually somewhat successful. It turns out you can buy the reagents from Richter and sell them back the finished products and make a small profit. I'm not gonna lie. I spent some time off camera doing exactly that. Richter replenishes part of his stock after some time, so in theory, I think you can make an infinite amount of SIGs working as a drug dealer. I just realized something. We are essentially Walter White aka Heisenberg from the hit TV series Breaking Bad. We're bald, we sell drugs, and let's not forget Heisenberg's signature hat, the spring hat, complete with its purple bow. The resemblance is uncanny. In any case, with my newfound riches, I was able to stock up on rations, kerosene, get some more camping supplies. I also got myself a whole bunch more ammunition for our guns. And speaking of which, I think I should switch out Sonya's weaponry here, because she's not really a shiv kind of gal, is she? No, so we'll give her the revolver. And we don't have a lot of shotgun shells, so I think we should probably maybe save this for momentous occasions, like parties. So we'll go for the rifle instead. Thank you. And what else? Uh, we also got a gas mask to share between the three of us whenever Fabrosi rips a noxious fart. And then I got... Oh, I got the um, artifacts deciphered by Schmidt. So we know what the powers are, but we don't know what the maledictions are, so we'll still have to do some research. And speaking of research, I also rested a few times and was able to research all the manuscripts and then I sold them. So now both the Fabro both Fabrosi and the Outsider have the same spells. I kind of wish it would just organize in the same way too, but no, that's fine though. Uh, Damnation to Stone, I'm looking forward to. Pawn Touch, the caster will turn its target into stone for a short duration. With enough damage, the target could even be shattered. And I think I can actually upgrade this with Stanley's Brain. Fantastic. Outsider, I guess, um, sure, go for it. Because I'd rather Fabrosi not uh, have his, you know, hands petrified. Easier shattering of the petrified enemies. Fantastic. What else did I get? We got a humanistic book for Sonya to read so that she can regain her sanity. And I think that might be about it. Oh, we also got this compass from uh, Honest Bill, and it says that it increases traveling speed on the world map. I don't know if this will stack with Danforth's compass, but I guess we might as well try because we need to go to Pilgrim's Parish. I mean, it's an alliterative name, so it's got to be a really nice place, right? So, it does seem like we're moving at a decent pace. You halt at the sight of a gargantuan silhouette rising above the mist in that blankets the land. The moment you realize that it is actually moving, a staggering fear fills your mind. No living thing this size could possibly exist. Can I just run to safety? Panic takes over and you sprint away over the rubble-filled terrain, turning you back to check the location of the colossal entity. You stumble and fall headlong on the ground. Shortly after the fall, you feel a stabbing pain in your ankle. It seems that you've badly sprained it. This will inevitably take its toll on your journey. Okay, so I lost some sanity and health. And now I have a sprained ankle. Why, RNG? Why? Why you do this to me? What have I ever done to you, RNG? And of course, through the pain, Fabrosi is just gorging on some uh, rations and whatnot. Alright, well, like I said, Pilgrim's Parish sounds like an amazingly uh, pleasant place. Yes. What is it? Infernal noise. Is someone crying? Laughing? Cry laughing? Crowthing. Unbelievable. Is that it? Is that where the noise is coming from? Oh, I guess the sound is um, based on my character's position. Interesting. Now, why does this look so familiar? Is this... Wait a minute. Isn't this where we saw Randolph Carter? The, yeah, we, we... Like, we... I think we saw him see... Go into that room, or uh, that house. Because they... I don't... Maybe? Lending an ear to the ruins, you are violently taken aback by a cacophonous medley of... So soul-freeling murmurs... Oh, my god. 
Soul freezing murmurs and vitriolic screams. Yes, I do hear the uh, vitriolic screams. Oh, this charred and buffeted building is the very house into which, whose yet unscathed confines, a certain Randolph Carter disappeared. It is just another carcass added to the death count of this necropolis. You point to Sonya, the charred house that you saw in your dream. She looks at the derelict building in disappointment. No, she says in a shivery voice. In disbelief, is this really the place in your dreams? Isn't it possible that you've mistaken the houses? This is where I last saw him. He was standing right in the doorstep. I'm terribly sorry, Sonya, but let us not all... Let us not all lose, lose all hope. Morning won't bring him back. You might as well forget about him until we find further proof. Wow, that is incredibly harsh. Let's go with I'm terribly sorry, Sonya. She remains speechless for a while until a single drop of tear slides down her cheek and vanishes before it has a chance to hit the ground. Really? You sense that her hopes have mostly waned. Uh-oh. That's not good. Alright, um, let me go ahead and take off Danforth's compass. And we'll keep the other compass, though. Because it does seem like maybe it doesn't have any, um, I mean, it's not an artifact, it's a tool, so... You know, shouldn't have any uh, maledictions. Unless it somehow offsets my uh, feng shui or something. Um... Alright, well, let me go check out this container. Ooh. That's pretty fancy. Oh, I got some beef jerky, and there's something more down here. What the fuck is up with this guy? Do you have a head? What happened to your face? Are you Balloon Man? Ah, oh, it's Balloon Man. From the hit TV series... Balloon Man, featuring Balloon Man. All right, what's this? This bizarre curio the bizarre curiosities exhibited here by the cult venerate the primordial grandeur of the eons before the rise of men. This statuesque rendition of Sasquatch, which has been the embodiment of man's primal fear of nature and his own dubious ancestry, fits nicely with the other curiosities on exhibit. This rather sloppily assembled skeleton of a subaqueous dinosaur is arguably the most eminent spectacle of this outlandish collection. From afar, one can easily mistake this primitive but singularly carved artifact of an elder civilization for the fossil of an actual prehistoric starfish. Oh, that must be made by the, um, the elder things. Uh, this nautilus shell, the immensity of which ought to be bewildered, ought to bewilder even a seasoned seaman, like the terrible old man, once protected its owner from the perils of unplumbed depths. Fantastic. You approach the cultists who are hanging about the ruins of the Museum of Curiosities. Cult, you of the wretched folk. The belongings that we keep and protect are only for our cult brethren. Okay, what kind of... What kind of belongings? The cult consecrates all the property of its initiates until they are utterly cleansed from the emotional filth that bonds them to those puny items. You are not worthy to wear the hood, so you have nothing to do with us, the collectors. Leave before we add your weak, susceptible heart to our collection. Wow. Thanks, Mr. Edgelord. Or is it Mrs. Edgelord? Past is dust. What, you guys just have a couple of, like, workbenches and lab tables here? Good grief. Right, I will, uh, loot more of your stuff, though. Thank you very much. Eh? Uh, sir? Disappear. Now. Doesn't seem like there's a lot of people that we can speak with. Got some robe rags, lockpicks, and tool, um, camping supplies. These tattered and dirty rags were once the garb of a cult member. Well, what happened to them? Oh, jeez. Hear me, you of the wretched folk. Your thinnest hope of salvation lies in testing your flesh with the pain that the stranger can induce. Seize this chance. Suffer and reborn. Wait, wait, hold on. Reborn's not a verb. Oh no, I think we're about to get our buttholes torn asunder and devoured by those faceless dudes. What is with those faceless dudes? Are they wearing masks? This person just looks like a, he has a tiny head. Oh, it's Beetlejuice. At the end of Beetlejuice. Gotcha. Desperation, driven by the sheik's infliction of pain, this pitiable pledge will attack ferociously for as long as they can hold on to their declining sanity. All right, um, let's try to cluster our team together, and then we'll do a, like a little, um, 
I guess, spit of all Razi on them as they cluster up together too, hopefully. Knock on wood. Okay, so this guy's coming in towards Verbrosi, fair enough. I mean, who doesn't want to shank his face? Uh, Sonya... Maybe we'll get you here. Take cover and start shooting. a girl. And that's about all you can do right now, that's fine. Oh no. They're not quite going in the direction that I was hoping they would go. Shoot. Uh, for Brosi... I was thinking that we would do Spit of Al-Razi, but considering they've split up a little bit, let's not. Mm, that would hit, but unfortunately that's kind of outside of our range, I think. Alright, then I'd say... just... shank his face off. Or what remains of his face. It kind of looks like someone ripped the skin off his face, and now we're just seeing the sinew and muscle and whatnot. Which sounds like a pretty cool Halloween mask. But, I mean, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone who um, wants to preserve their original faces and all that such. Alright, so Sonya goes next, followed by the Outsider, so we might be able to get a little bit of a, um, whatchamacallit going. Um, spit of al -Razi action. And this guy is actually within range. Hmm. Oh, we can do it a spit of al -Razi here, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, so then let's go after... Hmm. I suppose this guy also kind of needs deathing. That counts as a rear attack, too. Very nice. Fantastic. With your four measly damage. Uh, so we can try to move the outsider or we can just spit at him now. Just spit at him now. That's fine. Go for it. Hopefully we can just kill this guy in one hit. No? Whoa! Very nice. Unfortunately, the outsider took a little bit of damage himself. Due to his uh, spit dribbling. Not for Brosi. Oh. Well... I guess that is kind of a better alternative. Okay, I'm kind of surprised that this guy didn't go after the uh, outsider, but fair enough. Um, so we can do a spit of Al Razi as Fabrosi as well. That might kill this guy, uh, but are we prepared to pay for the sanity cost? How much does it uh, cost again? Ten, which is a rather significant amount. Um. Or should we try Tongue of the Dead? Caster can summon the soul of the deceased to inflict sanity damage to nearby combatants who witness the awakened corpse. I wonder if it's gonna affect my sanity too. I guess we might as well try, right? It shouldn't though, should it? Wow! Wretched One loses the grip on reality and is totally insane now. Fantastic! That's awesome! Holy shit! Also, did I use any sanity for that uh, spell? Because I shouldn't have used any sanity for that um, spell because of the uh, upgrade that I put on that thing, right? Because it does say... Let me just check. Uh, Tongue of the Dead. The sanity cost for the spell is cancelled out in combat. I feel like we used sanity though. Or maybe I'm mistaken. In any case, whoa, what's this? Another pile that I can uh, check out. Whoa! 36! We hit the jackpot, folks! What, so we just go back to life being all normal? And also, I guess the um, Tongue of the Dead doesn't affect our sanity, which is pretty cool. But, uh... And also, I think it uh, seems to... Um, affect the entire battlefield. Needs examination. A variant of the Waits and Peacocks 1822 invention, the Hydraulian. This antiquated fire engine shows that Arkham's public services have fallen well behind the times. So you say. I guess we should um, maybe see what this place is all about, right? Special screening tonight. Arkham Theater. And Fabrosi is now exhausted. Well, I'm sure anyone listening to this um, monstrosity would be. And it does seem to be a her, because now the uh, sound is coming from the left. Hooded man standing in the entrance seems like some kind of um, some kind of a crier for the cult who is fanatically promoting whatever mind abusing experience that is being dis in display in behind the closed doors. Shouting at the cultists, circumambulating the alleys of the parish, "Come, my brethren! I sense that among uh, that some among you are worthy of the revelation inside the theater of bones, the only true miracle of the century of lies. Come closer, brethren." 
I can see that the fruit of renunciation is ripe in some of you. Beyond these doors, you'll submit your hearts and purge your souls. Beyond these doors, you will witness the perfection that is our beautiful doom. Step inside and purge the last fragments of your former self in the unearthly glow of cellulose. Oh, sorry. Cellulose is in like the material that they use to uh, make uh, films out of, not cellulose as in like, you know, the excess body fat. <laughs> right. Sorry. Um, what is this place? The cultist uh, looks over you from head to toe with undeniable contempt. You are not welcome here, you of the wretched folk. Wait, so we're in league with those guys? You are standing on the sacred ground of the cleansed. It makes an odd hand gesture that suggests some kind of denunciation and looks at the building which once was the town's main attraction. Theater of Bones, the last stop of the pilgrims. The last stop? It is the one place we would condemn, kill, and burn for below a, before allowing, allowing an uncleansed like you to enter. Okay, well, what lies behind those uh, beyond those doors? Though his face is hidden within the shadow of his hood, his eyes somehow convey the man's revulsion. You dare ask the truth inside the theater of bones, heathen? You think that an uncleansed like you is worthy of this, of the miracle within? Your mere idea is blasphemy. The dead eyes of the Theodine Protecting the gates are locked upon you. Uh, forgive me, I did not mean to offend your uh, religion. Uncleanse? Let me start the cleansing then. <laughs> nice. It's a fucking good um, uh, line, I gotta say. Alright, well, forgive me. Religion? You fool. This is but the inevitable, ever humbling acceptance of a true role in the reign of the old ones. Be gone now! Wait, didn't I have another thing to ask? Oh. I've heard that all the notable figures of Arkham came here before the Black Day. Oh yes, they are all inside, still enjoying the screen in its full glory. Still? They must be dead. They're most likely just mummified um, assholes by now. And by assholes I mean like, they're literally buttholes, not like they're jerks or something. Whoa! What's happening here? Uh oh. It's been told that Adam witnessed the miracle. Such privilege. Where? At the roof of the hotel where the infidels live. Infidels, they are not worthy. Fantastic. A lot of headbanging here. Pretty cool. A lot of headbanging. These crude tents looking like a cauldron of fiery rubescence, wherefore, where from the name of the red docks was derived, offer a warm, albeit squalid shelter to the pilgrims. Oh, I can't occult this? Oh man. The cult has erected, decorated, and enshrined these crass, ungainly depictions of the awakened to worship them as totems or idols. So that's obviously Cthulhu right there. Um, is that supposed to be the black goat? Maybe? Who is that? That's gotta be John. Gotta be. John, the uh, great old one. Doesn't seem like there's anyone else that we can speak with. This guy's got no hood. Is he not significant? Guess not. I kind of wish that the people we can speak to were also highlighted. What is this? Mound of dead bodies. As an offspring of the cult's fanaticism, which rivals that of the Puritan inquisitors from centuries past, this noxiously fuming pyre is a, as severe a threat to the mind as it is to the lungs. Good grief. It does appear that we can uh, search through it though. These masses of mortal remains are riddled with disease and putrescence. Approach at your own risk. Oh, no, 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 oh. Oh, jeez. Okay, then, then maybe I can try wearing my gas mask. Wretched folk mask. One of the filthy masks worn by the brainwashed pledges of the cult. This coarsely stitched Patches of raw strips of leather is a cheap, vulgar, but very spooky wave masking the selfless, tortured faces of the wretched folk. Fantastic. I actually like this look on Fabrosi, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> ah, very cool. Alright. Is that gonna be enough? Though, I mean, we're still digging with our bare hands, right? Hmm, YOLO. Oh no, we're diseased. Well, we got a gold ring and a human skull out of it, so... That's nice. Wait, what is a disease? Rot disease, negative one physique. Uh-oh, so that's reducing my health. Ah, it does appear I can uh, take a rest, though. Cigar, human skull. 
Oh, something there. And some lady here. Junkie and some empty bottles. Hello, nurse. Oh, wait, really? You're not anyone special? Oh, man. Hmm. All right, well, for Brosy. Looks like the um, the wearing of the gas mask did not infect, prevent uh, uh, infection through your hands. Cross and a few cigs. And that's about it, it seems. Hello, sir. I teach through pain. Okay, that's nice. How the fuck do I get rid of my disease? I'm thinking maybe we should probably rest. Yeah, considering that I have no idea what's down this path. Wait, what do I need to do again? Oh, I need to find the blasted street. Oh, right, right. I thought we were supposed to go inside of the, um... The theater, but no. Uh, let me take a rest then. I want to see if it's possible for me to get rid of my disease. Uh, let's go ahead with the psychological treatment of the outsider. And then we'll also do some occult research on... We'll do the sleeper's cave dust. And you can do some research on the... Bleeding badge of the marshal, I guess. And then do some medical treatment on... Herbrosi? I don't know if that's how you get rid of diseases. Keep watch, do some reconnaissance, and that's about it. And hope that we don't get attacked in the middle of this uh, night. Okay, so we've discovered the malediction of the sleeper's cave dust, as well as the bleeding badge of the marshal. And Fabrosi is... Better? Question mark? Oh yeah, yeah, his max health and uh, it seems like a, the disease is gone. But I kind of wish that the, um... What's it? The maximum sanity and all that stuff would replenish to its uh, max too, but oh well. So what's the malediction of... This. The rest activity keep watch cannot be selected. Oh! Well, that's great then, because Fabrosi can't even keep watch even if he wanted to. The bleeding badge. Wearer is most likely is more likely to receive bleed state from un incoming attacks. Oh. Maybe then that's not a bad thing for um Sonya. Cause wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sonya has the trait incorporeal. Fucking perfect. Wow wow wee wa. Absolutely perfect. Is someone shiving a dog? I hear some like rumbling in the background. Kind of sounds like someone's shipping a dog. What's with this blue glow? Oh, it's Dr. Manhattan. Oh my god. It is not Dr. Manhattan. Uh, I guess we should put on our gas mask then, right? Sure. Did that make Sonya? Oh shit, we don't have a gas mask for Sonya. Oh, I guess I could have not bought that gas mask then. Fuck me. Father's diary. Scribbled by a trembling hand, this diary attests the woeful circumstances leading to the death of a father, father who attempted to the impossible to provide for his family. Alright, let me see what this is all about. Yeah, there we go. I should have stayed in Providence, you idiot. Or you should have stayed in Providence, you idiot. Why did you have to bring her, your family to this godforsaken place? Essex Hotel, they said. The Jewel of Arkham, they said. Damn it all. Miskatonic River boat trip my ass. Now all I, now I can take all the trips I want in those icy waters right, along, right alongside the monsters out of fantasy books. But to call them monsters would be an insult, as the real monsters are those mafioso cutthroats who settled in the hotel. They threw me and my family out in, onto the street, not to mention that I barely managed to wrest my wife from their dirty hands. Now we're living, or more precisely surviving, in a miserable freezing slum in Derby Street and my goddamn American dollars are as valuable as the rags and tatters I wear for a clothing. I've muddled through all the trash and paced every alley, leaving no stone, stone unturned. I can't find any food nor cigs. Everything's been pillaged, like a little Mikey is withering day by day. I must do something. I must do something for my family. Today, I scouted around the that cursed place that they've come to call the Blasted Street. I remain oblivious as to what sort of wickedness hides there, but the area does seem, doesn't seem to have been looted yet. If I can cobble together some kind of armor to protect myself, perhaps I can salvage something that hasn't yet been sacked and, the bar and then barter it off for essentials. Just when this, that garrulous Hines would have been of some use that black, the Blackguard vanished, I had to listen to him praise this wretched pa uh, patent, 
his uh, wretched patent for a week. Uh, it was so stupid. I was so stupid not to play, uh, pay closer attention. My chances would have been much better with that than with these rags. God, please save, spare me from the sickening dust. Give my chance. Give me a chance for my family. Sorry, I had a hard time reading that for some reason. So what? I guess judging by his being dead, the gas mask wasn't enough. What the fuck is that? Was the gas mask not enough? Um, there's something terribly wrong with the blasted street. It is impossible to survive this baleful environment for even for a short time without taking proper precautions. Uh, from a journal, journal I found on one of the blasted street victims, I read about a man named Heinz. This Heinz had a patent for a product that could help protect against the noxious conditions of the street. It also mentioned that he was staying at the XX Hotel. I see. So, what the fuck? What's going on? Oh, jeez. Oh, maybe our gas mask isn't enough. Something happens there. Wait, what is that? What is that? Hold on. No idea. Oh, fuck. Uh, I guess we'll go see this Heinz now. <laughs> sure. Wait. Does he have some kind of like, um, I don't know, like, uh, power armor or something? Good grief. All right, let's put that shit back on. So I'm not like diseased or anything like that then. Miss, are you sure you have nothing to uh, contribute? Nothing to tell me about, um... No, no. Don't, don't, don't touch the pile. We already touched that pile a long time ago. I mean, like a few minutes ago. <laughs> Didn't quite work out. Mm. And I guess there's nothing new to uh, make or buy. And we've already spoken to this guy, yes? Okay, fine. I guess we'll go to the Essex Hotel. Let's put on our compass as well. Sorry, let's put on our Danforth's compass. And now that we no longer have a sprained ankle, hopefully we can make it back downtown without um, any further issues. Knock on wood. Or should I rest? Come on, I said no more issues. In your journey, you encounter an area infested by plants with dark dead thorns. At this stage, um, altering your course entails loss of time and resources, but it's not like the pitch black sea of thorns is no cause for concern either. Turn back and seek another route, or pour gas over the field and scorch it requires kerosene. You take out the kerosene canister from your backpack, perf uh, fuse enough of it to the boundaries of the field of thorns, and then finally set this hostile flea of the blaze. When the inferno is over, all you're left with is a smoldering flattened sea of ash. Hey, fantastic! And we didn't use any, um, kerosene at, at all. Encountered some raving lunatics. Uh, do we want to fight raving lunatics? I'd say probably not. No, I think combat is highly discouraged in this game. Due to the accumulation of angst. Alright. Uh, do we need to speak to Ratsack? Nope. Who the fuck is this guy? He seems new. Excuse me, do you have a match? Uh, do I have a match? Just as no knight in Arkham is ever torned by the moon to the warm, encompassing arms of the sun, no castaway of this ruined asylum is ever likewise to be exempt from being frequented by one of its creepy patients. This scruffy man with swollen eye bags reeks of kerosene for some reason. Excuse me, would you spare me some matches? Um, why would you need that, if you reek of kerosene? I was a plague sent to punish an angel with a smelly shit to debob the face of mankind. I, therefore I, the maggot of this earth, must be washed off from its face. Um... What? I guess he's trying to commit suicide by letting himself on fire? Wherefore? Uh, have you done something bad? Benevolence is a fire that should not be uh, fed often, for it must burn steadily. If you galvanize the flames, it'll soon become cinders. Um... Hmm... Do you know what the hell- Do you know what hell sounds like? The tortured screams of your beloved greet you as you enter its black gates. And you can't do a damn thing. They'll call for help, beg for a sweet touch, but you can do nothing. Self-deprecatingly. 
hell happens to them because of you, you ignorant, selfish piece of shit? Uh... Just calm a little and tell me what your problem is. What the hell are you talking about, you maniac? Stay silent. Hmm... Tell me what the problem is. Since death took her, what's left of my fragile sanity has been dripping away like water does from the tap into a sink. With her ever... ever... Uh, every whimpering breath, I was losing the war to protect my puny humaneness front by front. Life and death are the inseparable cycles, or siles, by which infinity is, infinity is formed. Sounds like an esoteric thing to say. There's no difference between the living and the dead anymore, not in this place, and give him the matches to let himself on fire. Lay it off and get to the point, you imbecile. Welcome to Arkham, the finest ship of the line of your dreams. <laughs> nice. Of the line to your dreams. Alright, let's go for the esoteric uh, response. Nice. Not like this. In lassitude. Is pain the quintessence, quintessence of uh, the human soul? Despairingly. There's only life, and for life we all suffer. So let's not delay it any further. Can you give me a match? Um... Hmm... So, I guess he's lost his wife and he wants to, like, kill himself. Just calm down, will you? Huh. Do I want to? Hmm... Just calm down, will you? Indifferent. I just want a damn match. Do you have it or not? Here, you can have my cigars in return. Hawaiian imports. Huh. Cigars for a match. Well, I mean, I'm sure he'll find a way to, like, off himself by himself, right? Or do we... Can we come back to this later? No, sorry. He stares at you with the eyes of a man whose days are numbered. Oh, we can still, um... Still, still speak to him. Alright, well, uh, let's end the episode off here for now. I think. Um, or should we give him the match now, just in case something incredible happens? Maybe I should. Mmm... No, you know what? We'll leave it for now. We'll come back tomorrow and we'll go to the Essex Hotel and find out what's, uh, what Heinz's new invention is and how it's gonna protect me from the blasted street and all that such. Alright, so for now, thanks for watching and have a good breakfast!